The sun has a final invisible force that reaches out much further. Our star is by far the largest wonder in the solar system. In fact, it alone is 99% of the solar system's mass. It's this immensity that gives the sun its furthest reaching influence. Gravity. So its gravitational field dominates and all the planets are bound gravitationally to it. The Earth, for example, 93 million miles away, also known as one astronomical unit. So let's represent that by one centimetre. And the most distant planet, Neptune, 30 astronomical units, so 30 centimetres. We then meet the Kuiper Belt objects, of which Pluto, the ex-planet, is a member. They inhabit a region around 50 astronomical units. So that is the size of the solar system in terms of, well, all the planets and all the Kuiper Belt objects out to Pluto. But it doesn't stop there. Beyond Pluto, space is a cocktail of extremely dilute gas and dust, mostly just hydrogen and helium, left over from the universe's beginning of the Big Bang. But every now and then, you encounter lumps of ice in vast orbits that take millennia to loop around the sun. And that cloud of snowballs is called the Oort Cloud. And astonishingly, the sun's grip is so strong that objects in the Oort Cloud keep popping up all the way to out here. Now that cloud of dirty snowballs still gravitationally bound to the sun extends out 50,000 astronomical units. On our scale, that's half a kilometre from the sun. And remember, the Earth was one centimetre away. This, then, is the full extent of the sun's empire. The lightest gravitational touch, which retains a cloud of ice enclosing the sun in a colossal sphere. Beyond the Oort cloud, there is nothing. Only sunlight escapes. Light that will take four years before it reaches even the sun's closest neighbor, Proxima Centauri. A red dwarf star among the 200 billion others that make up the Milky Way. And it's by looking here deep into our local galactic neighborhood that we are learning to read the story of our own star's ultimate fate. <laughs>